How's it going? My name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video I'm here to show you how I like to design my drum sounds using PSP plugins. So as you may or may not know if you're familiar with my music, I make ambient and future garage inspired music, and these types of drums have a very particular sound to them. So rather than your super polished ultra modern drum sound, these drums are more based around that really organic and alive feeling, which is why I love PSP plugins for processing them, because they just add that nice layer of saucy goodness that no other plugins seem to do. So in this video, I just wanted to walk you through from scratch how I like to build up my drum sounds for my tracks. So let's dive in and get started. All right, guys. So like I said, today I'm here to show you how I like to craft my drum sounds using PSP plugins. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the final mix. So we have this really knocking drum mix and these drums are right up in your face and this is actually a little bit tricky to do because I find that there's a really really delicate balance between too much and not enough. So if we take off all of the effects and stuff this is what the actual drum mix sounds like. Which isn't all that bad and once we add everything back in. we get up to a much more thumpy, weighty, chunky level and things just really hit a lot harder, which I like quite a bit. So when it comes to the drum sounds themselves, these are some drums that I've sampled and basically these are just vinyl drums. And then I played around with things in my drum sampler, like pitching them up, um, messing with different filter types. So like on the rim shot uh, here, we've got a uh, pitched up pretty high, nice bandpass filter, pretty resonant, you know, things like that, uh, the hi-hat is just a really small cut that's got a high pass filter and you know I'm just kind of taking this sample drum groove drum break thing and bringing it into more processed territory because these drums are all about being you know very processed and very skippy sounding. So to accentuate that uh, one other piece of advice I have that uh, people seem to get stuck with these types of drums is using the amplitude envelope. So if I enable uh, this mode here we'll actually be able to see this sample. So if I didn't have this amplitude uh, envelope, it would just be this chop, which is fine. But in this case, you know, we want these really tight swinging, skipping drums. So tightening up your amplitude envelope um, and using things like the uh, curve adjustment as well is a really good way to get drums that are a lot tighter and uh, end up a lot punchier because we're going to be using compression and other things to our advantage to make them kind of jump and skip and hit a lot harder. So I think the heart and soul of just about any track is going to be the kick and the snare. And in this case, we have a kick and a rim shot. And right now, they're pretty all right. And for more of like a straight up lo-fi garage two-step thing, this would be all right. You know, we would just have to turn them up. But we really want these big, you know, punchy knocking drums to really make things cut and step out in the mix and really kind of get, you know, get you moving when you hear the track. So I think taking the time to get from A to B of, you know, a rough drum sound to a completed polished, you know, nice thumpy mix is really, really important. So what I use a lot of the time on kick drums is actually just two plugins. Uh, PSP Mix Bass for one, uh, there's this Drum Loop 2 preset, and I find that this does a pretty good job just about every time. And if I take it off, you know, we lose so much weight. And then messing around with the punch control here. Just to get that extra little tiny bit of knock out of the kick is really, really nice. And this makes it super easy to go from kind of, you know, a sampled vinyl break uh, kick to something that's a lot thumpier and weightier and just, you know, has a lot more meat to it, which is always good. So from there, it's just kind of about enhancing this. And that's what I like the E27 SE for. And without that. So you hear this EQ makes quite a bit of difference. And I think a lot of that is from this drive control. I love using this EQ for drums, especially for future garage uh, type stuff. And this just makes drums hit so much harder. So I'm just increasing the drive a little bit, no more than four uh, most of the time. I usually keep it between two and four. I find there's kind of a sweet spot here. Um, from here, you might need to high pass the kick. 
um, it kind of depends on the kick sample you use because sometimes mix bass can get super aggressive with the low end. Um, but you know, in this case, this kick was kind of fine as it was because it didn't really have a lot of low end to begin with. Uh, from there, just drive up the output a little tiny bit. Um, this is just to you know really make it hit a lot harder and be really thick and meaty. So uh, in terms of the actual equalization, I applied a little bit of a boost at 63 hertz, about 2 dB, um, and then another boost around 700-ish. Uh, in this case, 680 is what we get with E27. And I find this is a good frequency for that extra bit of like knock and chunk uh, to a kick drum. And this is especially important for things like, you know, smaller speaker systems. Um, you know, bringing out a bit of that kind of like lower mid range can really make a kick drum stand out. And that ends up uh, giving us the completed kick sound. So now it's on to the rim shot, which uh, without anything on it sounds like this. And I find the rim shots and snares uh, for future garage stuff, like I said, it's all about just kind of having a super tight on, uh, amplitude envelope and pitching it up or pitching it down, depending on the sample. But it's really just about adding the right EQ and the right reverb, I think. So I just went with E27SE and drove this up a lot. I find that really overdriving these types of snares and rim shots sounds really, really good. Um, from here, I just kind of played with the EQ depending on the track. So in this case, I kind of wanted a pretty bright uh, rim shot. So from here, I just added a bit of top end. I uh, played with it about 10 to 12K seemed to bring it up. Added 5.6K uh, just to bring up a little bit of presence. And then down here, lifted around 370. And this is just to bring up a bit of that kind of knocky, barky lower mid that this rim shot has. And then you might engage the 28K switch. In this case, um, it doesn't do all that much because there's not too much high frequency. But this can be nice to add just a little bit of sparkle on the top. So after that, I added an excellence, which is a really, really, really killer spring reverb. So this is on basic two. I'm not really doing anything to it other than just messing with the decay time and the mix. Um, sometimes I'll play with the spring set as well. Uh, just kind of can add a different character to the reverb, but having a relatively short decay and a pretty low mix, I find adds just a really nice kind of extra bit of space to the rim shot because without it, um, although we do want a really direct uh, drum mix and really, you know, forward in the mix, I just find that that feels a bit naked, whereas this just has a bit more life and movement to it, which is really, really nice. So after that, we need to add our hi-hat. And without anything, uh, the hi-hat ends up sounding like this, which is pretty all right. Because, you know, we filtered it and pitched it and did the amp envelope and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we end up with a nice tight hi-hat sound, but it, I don't know, to me it just sounds a bit boring. So what I like to do is actually start off by using PSP Echo, and I just set this delay all the way down this little knob uh, slider draggy thing here, <laughs> um, and then set this to like 30 to like maybe 90 milliseconds. And what I'm doing is I'm creating almost like a Haas effect. So what I'm doing is adjusting the feedback pan, I'm turning the ping pong pretty much all the way up, tape speed all the way down, uh, feedback, I just play with until it feels right. It's right about there seems to be good. You might filter this as well. Um, we might go ahead and filter out some of the lower end of that and then mess with the drive. And then I just messed with the spread and balance until I got a nice stereo delay going on. And I find that this just spreads the hat out and makes it just a bit more interesting to listen to. So in front of that, I've got the E27SE. Um, once again, uh, just a really, really great EQ for drums and stuff. So in this case, uh, we can go ahead and maybe just high pass this once again. Maybe got a bit of drive, drive up the output slightly, and then I just boosted 20K pretty hard and added the 28K switch. And then we get this really nice, bright hi-hat sound, which uh, just kind of stands up in front of the kick and the rim shot. But doing that nice stereo delay ends up kind of pushing it out of the way of everything else. So, you know, it kind of just helps the groove bounce in, you know, the stereo image, which is really nice. After that, uh, there's just a percussive uh, hit here. I'm not entirely sure what part of the drum sample that was. I think I just pitched it weird and it ended up almost acting like a shaker. So E27 just made it nice and bright, a little bit of drive, uh, 4.6K, and then added the 2445. 
um, which I find on a very short setting just adds a really nice sense of room and depth to just about anything. So I like to use that quite a bit on anything else that, you know, is kind of like a backing element. So this way, you know, just adding that little bit of reverb just pushes it a little further back and out of the way of everything else. Um, because, you know, the priority here is this kick and this rim shot. So after that, there's another rim shot sound here, uh, which is just another snare chop. And this is a really bright one. I uh, just used a bandpass filter pretty high up, and I just added the 2445 to that. And just a short, little roomy thing. And this is just kind of leading into the actual rim shot on the last uh, beat of every bar. So it's not really doing much, and like I said, I'm just using that reverb to push it ever so slightly out of the way. So once all that's done, we get this really nice, heavy drum mix. So from here, what I like to do is push all of these to a drum bus. And this is kind of where the magic happens, and I think is really what everyone should do with their drums. So I've got the FET presser here, and this is an excellent, excellent, excellent compressor. I engage blend, which allows me to do this in parallel. So I usually start out at about 50%, and then I just kind of want to aim to take off like three to maybe five dB, um, usually when the kick hits, because that's kind of the thing that's going to trigger this the most, because the low frequencies have a lot of energy. Uh, attack and release, I just play with. So in this case, an attack of like 0.8, you know, just to grab it, and a pretty quick release. Um, then, yeah, just messing with threshold and makeup until things sat right. And in this case, we really don't need the makeup, but just kind of pushing it, can add a nice kind of bit of mojo and vibe. So I blended this in a bit heavier at about 70%. And that really makes this whole drum mix kind of stand up. And I think a lot of that is just due to the character the FET presser adds. So just kind of the cherry on top here, um, kind of an unnecessary step, but I just really like what Micro Warmer does. I'm um, just adding a little tiny touch of drive here like half a db or so and then uh, messing with the knee until we're getting to right about two um, and then i'll just kind of mess with the low and high pretty much by ear there's not really an exact science to it so uh, the high end i just boosted just a tiny tiny bit um, just to bring up that air and the low end i just dropped uh, like a db and a half um, just because it got really really exaggerated but you can hear, um, obviously, this makes everything louder and, you know, louder to everyone's ears is better. But just the amount of, like, crack and snap that gives everything in the mix, I really, really love. So that is how I will take uh, drums from these kind of flat, uh, break beady things. Which, in that context, you can't even hear at all and you know that's how i take those from that to something a bit more modern and polished like this so definitely try it out for yourself i think this is a great way to achieve these really nice direct and heavy hitting drums without a lot of effort and that's it for this video if you want to check out these plugins for yourself you can find them today at pspaudioware.com